In this video, we are going to discuss the minimally invasive lumbar discectomy. For patients that have had a disc herniation that's causing severe symptoms, uh, nerve injury, uh, a condition called cauda equina syndrome, or for patients that have a disc herniation that's causing a lot of leg pain and is not responding to conservative treatment, surgical options are available. The minimally invasive lumbar discectomy is made through about a one inch incision in the back under general anesthesia. And what we are, the reason we're able to do a minimally invasive surgery is we're working through a small tubular retractor that's about 18 millimeters in diameter. The retractor is placed on the back of the spine. So this is our initial view here. And you can see the arrows kind of show our surgical trajectory. If this is the disc herniation that we're targeting, we're coming through the back, landing onto the bone, and then we remove the bone and the ligament underneath it to get to the nerve. And then the goal is to remove the fragment of material. Now, I'm not gonna show you the whole video here. Some patients are sensitive to the surgical videos themselves, but if you wanna go watch the video, download the Summit Medical Institute app, and you can watch this and other videos showing exactly how we do a disc herniation surgery. The main risk in my mind of a disc discectomy is that the disc herniates again. So we're not taking the whole disc out, we're just removing the fragment affecting the nerve. The injury to the disc is still there, so it can herniate again, which is why we involve physical therapists and other practitioners to hopefully prevent it from happening in the future. And patients about 10% of the time after surgery will experience another herniation for which surgery may, mean, may need to be repeated. Uh, spinal fluid leak, injury to the nerve, infection are also possible complications of a discectomy. Fortunately, they're probably less than 1%. The surgery is done as an outpatient. It typically takes less than an hour to do, and the patients go home the day of surgery, typically within a, f uh, a few hours after the operation. The recovery process is about four to six weeks, and it's a process. You start with walking and activities of daily living, and then incrementally increase your activities based on how your symptoms are. And I think it's reasonable for patients to be back to full activity without any restrictions at all within about four to six weeks. So if you're gearing up for the ski season and you need to have a discectomy done, uh, maybe six weeks from the time of surgery, you could be back on the slopes doing most everything that you would have been doing before. I think the surgery is a valuable component of uh, what we have available for patients with disc herniation. But again, surgery is only a part of the treatment and we need to think about these things holistically. Uh, but the surgical intervention can be very effective at alleviating the pressure on the nerve and having a return to function uh, without significant pain. Uh, typically, the, the benefit of surgery is experienced really right after the operation. The patients notice a dramatic improvement.